Hello friends! Today I'm going to show you how to sew by hand a fabric face covering. You don't need a sewing machine. You only need a few supplies, an iron, and an ironing board. I know there are many face mask designs out there. I developed this style for its simplicity to sew yet effective design. Let's get started. These are the things that you're going to need to start your project. You will need a 12 by 12 inch square of fabric. It should be a, a cotton blend. It could be cotton polyester or 100% cotton. It has to be woven fabric, no t-shirt knits. Um, it, need, it needs to be like a men's button down Oxford shirt. Um, a quilting cottons work really well because they have a nice tight weave. So you'll need a 12 by 12 inch piece of that, uh, about a 30 inch piece of quarter inch wide elastic, 10 inches of extra wide double fold bias tape. You'll need paper for your pattern and a pencil, a ruler, a measuring tape, thread, sewing pins, a safety pin, a sewing needle, um, small scissors for cutting threads, paper scissors and fabric scissors, and lastly, an iron and an ironing board. Friends, your first step is making a pattern. I already made mine. It's just a square, so you can draw a square for a medium-sized mask that's women's size. It's going to be nine and a half inches by nine and a half inches. If you want to make a larger size that's for a men's size, you want to make a 10 inch by 10 inch square. So you'll just draw a square and measure it out 10 by 10 or 9.5 by 9.5 and, and then you'll cut it out. So that's what I've done. So here's my pattern. I also drew a grain line on it. The grain line tells me what direction to lay the pattern on the fabric based on where the fabric's um, length grain is. So I'm going to um, line up the uh, grain line with my selvage edge, which I've done, and I'm getting the selvage edge and the grain line parallel. Then I'm using my fabric weights. We only need one layer of fabric. I want to make sure that's clear. My pattern says cut one. We're just using one layer of fabric. If you don't have fabric weights, then go ahead and use pins to pin the fabric, to pin the paper pattern to the fabric. So I'm just going to use my fabric weights. So after you have your pattern, lay it on your fabric, one layer, pin it to the fabric, and then you go ahead and cut it out. Very simple. I'm just cutting out a square. It's nice to have a pattern because then you can use it over and over again. I know some people like to take a shortcut and they'll just start um, I'm going to grab some pins here, I need some pins. Um, they will grab their fabric and then just start drawing lines on the fabric and cut it out, but I don't recommend that because then you'll have um, marks on your fabric and sometimes they don't come out. So, and then if you have the pattern and you want to make it again, then you're ready to go. So I'm just going to finish cutting this out, and then the step after this is add an ironing board. So you'll need a flat surface that you can use to iron on that has um, some padding on it. If you don't have an ironing board, maybe you could lay a towel on a table. And I'm just cleaning up this edge here that I didn't cut perfectly straight. It's going to help to have it cut nice and straight. And that's it for our first step. Alright, I'm at the ironing board starting my second step. And what we're going to do is I have my fabric with the wrong side up. And I'm folding both of these edges, all four of the edges are the same length. So it doesn't matter which edge you start on. What I'm doing is I'm folding this edge over about an, an eighth of an inch, a little, a fat eighth of an inch, I call it. So if you have, you want to get your ruler out and you want to measure. So if you've never sewn before and you're not really sure what an eighth of an inch is, then you need to look. 
So it's a it's a little more than an eighth. It's a little it's a fat eighth, and I'm using my iron to hold it down. This is called and now I'm going to fold it again. So this is called a baby hem. It's basically a baby hem, and it's we're finishing the raw edge of the fabric. So I'm folding it twice and I'm using my fingers to turn and as I turn the fabric I grab it with the iron I'm smashing it down, pressing it with the iron so that it'll stay folded. And that's my nice baby hem. Now I'm going to take my pins and I'm going to pin it down. So I need to have the pins holding it down so when I'm sewing it, it doesn't pop up. So the more pins you have, the easier it is to sew. Um, it'll hold the fabric down for you and you'll have less mistakes. So don't be shy um, about putting in a lot of pins if you're a new sewer. And then you really want to make sure that it's crisp and folded down with that iron. You want a nice hot, hot iron that will help tremendously. If it's not staying folded down, your iron might not be hot enough. And you want to make sure your edge is neat, is even. So you want to make sure it's the same distance here all the way across. So I finished pinning my baby hem. And I'm going to just go over it again with the iron. Okay, so now we're going to sew down that baby hem using a needle and thread. I'm going to use this black thread. It doesn't match my fabric, but I'm hoping that it'll make it easier for you to see what I'm doing. And we're going to do a double layer. So I'm measuring out two. I folded my thread in half like that, and it's um, quite a bit longer than my actual fabric. So I want to make sure I have enough thread. So it's probably about 15 inches long, times two. And then you thread your needle. So for first time sewers, you just put the thread through the eye of the needle. And we're going to do a double layer. So I'm going to pull the thread all the way through. So it's doubled. And double like that. And then I'm going to, um, I'm not going to make a knot at the end. I'm going to do an invisible knot, which I'll show you how to do right now. So this is a back stitch that we're going to do. And I'm going to prick the fabric underneath my fold. And I'm going to prick the fold of the fabric. I'm going to stop with a, a, about a half inch tail. And then I'm going to prick the um, fabric. Not the fold though, just try to prick just the fabric. And I'm going to pull my thread through, but I'm not going to go all the way through. I'm going to grab this loop with my needle, and I'm going to pull it tight, and then that makes a knot. So now I have a nice knot. All I have to do is trim these tails right here with my little thread scissors. And now I can start sewing. So I'm going to make quarter inch stitches. So now that means that I'm moving, I just moved a quarter inch from that edge there and went a quarter inch down and now I'm going to do another one. I'm pricking the fabric under the fold and I'm pricking the edge of the fold. So my threads um, didn't come down flat so I'm just going back and pulling them nice and taut. There we go. And I'm going to do, cut, come down a quarter inch again, grab a piece of the fabric, grab the fold of the and again. So you're just doing the same thing all the way down. My thread is not behaving. So you can see that it's turning into this little 
pattern of stitches and you want them all to be the same length and it's called a back stitch. So the other side all you're gonna see is this little prick so if you're using matching thread you really you won't even see it. It's invisible. Alright I finished my stitch, my back stitch. It looks like this on the right side. I put a knot at the end when I was finished just like the knot I did up here at the top, the invisible knot. And then you take your iron and you're gonna just give it a press so it's nice and flat. What you've completed is the top of your nose. So once the mat's finished, there's a, a nose and a mouth here, the two tops. And this is what you've done, is you've finished this edge. So we need to do the other edge the same way. So this edge directly across from it needs to be folded a quarter inch and ironed and folded a quarter inch. And we're gonna stitch it the same way. So not these two edges are different. You're sewing this edge and then the edge directly across from it. We're folding up. So one edge is where your nose is and the other edge is where your chin is. So I'm gonna go finish this up and then I'll show you the third step. All right, so we finished our edges, the top and the bottom, the same. So our next step is to do the pleats. So we're gonna make three pleats. I'm starting in the center. You wanna make three pleats that are about the same. Mine are like three quarters of an inch. So I like to start in the center and I just finger press it down. And then I'm gonna take another one right here. And I'm just eyeballing it. So what we're gonna measure is once we've made the pleats, we're gonna measure the uh, the width of the mask and that needs to be four inches. So I'm just toying with my pleats and now I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna see if I'm at four inches. So I'm a little more than four inches so I'm gonna adjust it. I need to make my pleats tighter or bigger. A little bit. So let's see what we are now. One, two, three. Now I'm at four. So you want to measure all the way across and make sure you're at four inches. And I'm going to measure over here. And I'm about four inches. So now I'm going to take my iron and press those pleats down. And after you press them, then we're gonna pin them to hold them in place until we sew them. So I'm just gonna measure again. One, two, three, four, I'm good. One, two, good. How am I over here? One, two. Over here I'm a little short, so I'm gonna even it out. I just pulled it out a little, I just adjusted it a little. And now I'm going to pin. So uh, this is a pleated face mask, as you can already tell, that's the style. And we have three pleats. Now we're gonna baste in those pleats. Basting is a whole a place holding stitch, so we want to baste the pleats so they don't move. And I have a single layer of thread. I'm going to tie a knot this time in my thread. I wrap it around my finger and I roll it off and I make a big knot. So I'm going to actually work from the wrong side of the fabric and I'm going to go, I'm starting here at the bottom about a half inch little less than a half inch from the raw edge. This is my raw edge here. So I'm gonna go a half inch in and I'm gonna start here at the top of my hem. And I'm gonna go in and out about a half inch. So 
So this stitch I call a basting stitch and it's just to hold the pleats in place and we're going to finish the raw edge with bias tape. So this is just a quick stitch again holding those pleats. Now I'm gonna make a knot. I'm gonna pinch the fabric with my needle and make a loop and then I go through the loop like that and that's my knot and then I just cut it off. So now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Alright so this step is the step where we're gonna finish these raw edges with the bias tape. So I have two pieces of five inch long bias tape. So my mask is four inches wide. So I cut these five inches wide because I need a half inch on each side to fold over and finish. So I want you to cut two pieces for your edges. It's extra wide double, double fold bias tape. You could even make your own if you wanted to. You could cut strips of bias tape and then fold them. It's about an inch and a half wide bias tape. And then I just wanted to show you, this is what it's gonna look like finished. So this is the finished mask with three pleats. And it has elastic that goes around your head. This one has um, two layers with a different fabric on the inside. And this is the bias tape. This is how the bias tape is going to look when it's finished. And this is the outside. Ours only has one layer of fabric. So I just wanted to show you that, what it looks like when it's finished. Okay, so I'm taking my bias tape. The bias tape has one edge that's a little bit longer than the other. You can see it. I'm gonna take the shorter edge so I'm, I'm opening it up and this edge here is shorter than this side. So I'm taking the shorter side and I'm opening it up and I'm laying it up on the edge of my raw mask here. And I'm leaving a half inch hanging off each side. And now I'm going to pin it. After I'm done pinning it, I'm going to take my needle and thread uh, with one layer of thread. And I'm going to tie a messy knot. Here's my thread. It's about long enough to finish this edge here, four inches. It's a little bit longer and I'm going to make my messy knot because no one's going to see it when it's inside here. And I'm going to go down with the needle. And I'm starting at the very edge of, of my mask. And then I'm going to come up. So I'm doing the same stitch technique that I used when we were basting. But this one I'm going to do close together, very close together. So I'm doing about a quarter inch um, long stitch and a quarter inch, not a, actually not a quarter inch, I want you guys to come up right next to your stitch. Because we want this to hold nice and tight. So now I'm going down, a, I'm making a quarter inch long stitch. And then I'm bringing my needle up right next to the thread. And I'm using the crease in the bias tape as my guide, my line. I leave the pins in unless they get in my way. If they start to get in my way, then I take them out. So I'm doing about a quarter inch long again. And then I'm coming up right next to my stitch because we want it to be a strong hold so the other side looks is looking like that so 
So I want you to go ahead and finish sewing this whole side just like this. When I get to the end, I'm going to make my invisible knot, and then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Hi friends. All right, we're almost done. Okay, after you've attached your bias tape to each side, then you take the iron and press the tape out like this. As you can see, my basting stitch is showing now. So all we're gonna do is take the basting stitch out before we go to the next step. So I'm just gonna clip it. If your basting stitch isn't showing, then you can just leave it in. I'm only taking out the bits that um, are showing in my mask. So now I'm going to turn my mask over and I'm going to fold this corner in and iron it. The iron's going to help me do that. And I'm going to fold in the other corner as well and iron it at the same time. Nice hot iron helps. So we fold in the corners and then you're going to fold the edge over. So you want to get these corners nice and neat and use some pins to hold it down. So on this side I'm folding my corner in tight. and folding the tape down. And this pre-folded bias tape works really nicely. It has the creases in it, so it makes it really easy to work with. So I'm just gonna put a couple of pins and after I pin, I'm going to just give it another iron, another press with the iron to make sure everything's flat. So it's easier to work with that way. And then I take my needle and thread a single layer of thread that's probably double the width of the mask. And I'm not gonna tie a knot, I'm gonna do an invisible knot. And I'm gonna be working backwards doing a back stitch, just like we used on the top baby hem here and on the bottom here. So I'm going to, and I want to start here in this corner. Don't start here. Start up here because we want to close this opening, this fold here. We want to close that. So I'm going to grab a little bit of the bias tape kind of underneath because I want to hide my knot. Oops, I lost my thread. When that happens, you just go ahead and re-thread it through your needle. When that happens, you probably need to make a longer tail so you don't lose your thread. So now I'm just going to go ahead and make my invisible knot where I grab another, I'm grabbing a piece of the bias tape and then I'm going to go through my loop. Whoops, I got caught. So I'm going to do it again. It came out. Ah, I'm having a hard time here with my <laughs> thread going out. So let's make another loop. And go through the loop. And there's our knot. And then I go ahead and trim off this tail so it doesn't get in my way. So now I'm just working the, the back stitch. and closing this hole. So sometimes um, the fabric's pretty thick right here because there's extra double, double wide folds. So sometimes what I do is I use the table that I'm working at to help me push it through. So I'm actually pushing on the needle on the table 
to push it through to save my hands. It's a little trick. And I'm continuing with my back stitch. So if it's too thick in one area, you can move, move the needle maybe a little bit into another area and it might be easier. I'm putting my stitches very close together. Uh, my pin is in the way, so I'm actually going to move it. You can do that. It's not against the rules. So these back stitches are right up next to each other, just like we did on the, um, on the hems, the baby hems. So once I get to the corner here, after I've sewn the two bias tape folds together, then I'm going to start working down. So now I'm working back down this way, all the way down and then all the way over to this corner and tie a knot and I'm done. And you'll do the same thing on the other side. So my stitches are about um, a quarter inch wide, maybe a little less, and I want to attach the bias tape to the mask fabric. So I'm grabbing, I'm pushing this up with my needle, and I'm grabbing a bit of the fabric and a bit of the bias tape. And they're a little, I'm, it's a little less than a quarter of an inch because I really want this to be tight. And I'm just pinpricking the fabric and pinpricking pin the bias tape. I don't want my stitches to show a lot on the other side. So on the other side, it looks like this. So if you're using matching thread, it shouldn't show at all. And if you're using matching a thread that matches your bias tape, it won't show at all, or if it's in the same shade at least. And you can see the pattern. It's very similar to what we did here. I'm making them a little bit smaller. And after you're done doing this side to the end, then you'll do the other side the same way. Okay, so I finished my uh, stitches here, as you can see, and I'm now I'm going to fold it again. So I'm, my bias tape is on my edge, just like this, and I'm going to fold it again like this. And what's going to happen is now there's the channel right here for the elastic to go through. So after you fold it, then you take your pin. You probably only need a couple pins and pin it down. I'm basically just folding it, it's about a half inch. Uh, it's it's uh, relaxed. I, I've already done this side and I've pinned it. And you don't need to, you can push it a little bit back like this if you want, but it's okay if there's a little bit of the mask fabric showing because you just want it to be relaxed when it lays in this position. And now I'll take my needle and my thread again. I have one layer of thread with a long tail. I'm not going to tie a knot. I'm going to do an invisible knot. And I'm going to do the back stitch again. So I'm going to grab a little bit of the fabric underneath the bias tape, just like a prick, starting here at the top and a piece of the bias tape, and I'm going to pull it through. And I'm going to grab another prick of the fabric and the bias tape. And I'm actually going to pull it through again, like that. Now I'm going to go through a third time and make my knot. Go through the loop, make my knot. And then I'm going to trim this tail so it's not showing. 
and start my back stitch. I'm going to go quarter inch dif distances. I'm not going to make it as tight as I did um, on the on the last stitch we did. So I'm going to make it a little longer distance so you can get through it a little faster. And again, I'm pinpricking the fabric just under the bias tape and then I'm grabbing the folded edge of the bias tape with my needle. So prick with my needle the mask and then prick through the fold. And I'm working back back to this edge here. You don't need to sew in this corner like we did with the bias tape. You want to leave this open because this is a channel for the elastic right here. So leave that open. You want to just start sewing right on this edge and we're going to sew all the way down to this edge. I'll show you a couple more stitches. We're doing the same thing that we just did. Nice little back stitch, getting lots of practice all the way to the end. Okay, I'm almost finished. I'm going to do another invisible knot. You're going to do the same thing on the other side. Fold it over, pin it, and do the back stitch. So I'm just finishing up with my invisible knot and then you'll go and do the other side. And we're almost ready for our last step. All right, friends, I finished my binding on the edges and now I'm almost done. It's looking really cute. All we have to do is feed the elastic through these channels. I have a 26 inch long piece that's quarter inch wide. You take a safety pin and you put it through the end and push it through the channel. I'm going to take it through this opening. And you slide it right through. So this mask design has elastic that goes all the way around your head. It doesn't just go around your ears. It goes all the way around your head, which I think is much more comfortable. So now I'm going to the other side and I'm pushing my safety pin through this side. So I'm just pushing it all the way through just like that and I want to make sure my elastic is flat and not twisted. So it's not twisted and then what I'm going to do is bring my two ends together like this. And I'm folding them over. They're overlapping about a half inch on each side. And then I'm going to pin it. So the pin's going to hold it in place while I sew by hand. Now I'm going to sew the ends of the elastic together. So I folded them on top, pinned them, I made a knot, and I'm just going to go in and out with the thread to connect the two pieces together. Hello friends, I hope you enjoyed learning how to make this hand sewn mask. Be safe and stay well. I'm going to show you what mine looks like. <laughs>